So many have been asking why there's no Superman game. Some have concluded that it's because it's too difficult. Some have concluded that the publisher in charge of the DC comics and the heroes and the likeness of those characters is not in a position that they want to greenlight any project. Some have even concluded that, you know, because Superman is OP, he may not make for an interesting game. Now, there are probably other conclusions out there that I've not mentioned, but this is a short discussion anyways, and I'm freestyling a lot of this stuff from my mind. But I don't necessarily think that all of these parties have considered the body of work of Superman in general, nor have they considered that in order for you to be able to possibly deliver a Superman you know, game or deliver something that Superman is in, you have to actually employ something that I'm going to call suspension of belief. I know you already had to do that anyways to think that there was some superhero that came all the way from some planet that doesn't exist, from a ship, and his planet blew up, and he's an orphan now, but he got earthly parents. Everything about Superman requires a suspension of belief. He's a fictional character, just like any other fictional character. You really have to do that. Now, I'm not just saying we're going to be suspending belief overall. I mean, we have to have some established ground rules. But you're going to realize that a character like this is quite interesting to write. This is, by the way, footage from the Superman game that was canceled, that was in development in the 2006-2007 timeline, that got canceled because the publisher who had committed to funding and publishing the title went bankrupt. Hence, the developer was left, you know, in a sense, without funds. And nobody wanted to take the project on from them. And so they had to pretty much shelve this particular project and move on. But this prototype was already in this phase of development. And I'll use it as an example to kind of showcase what it is that I mean. Now, one of the cool things that this actually shows us is there's a small, you know, kerfuffle with uh, Superman and (laughs) Doomsday. And this is what makes it very interesting because Superman and Doomsday are phenomenally or significantly strong characters, both as hero and as villain. Like, it's insane how strong both characters are when you've seen the amount of destruction that they've actually caused. In fact, if you go watch, say, maybe Snyder's Justice League, uh, you know, or maybe the other, you know, Batman v Superman movie or whatever it is, you notice that these characters are capable of colossal damage if they were to fight within city limits. But here's the thing. In order for you to be able to tell a story, you really have to, you know, in a sense, mess around or make a jello-like set of rules that can be, in a sense, bent at your convenience as a story writer. Now, you don't want to do it too much because you do it too much then, you know, you cause trouble because now your story is no longer coherent. But in some instances, I think it's okay for you to do it. Now, on a large scale, I don't necessarily think we have an example other than this one here. So Doomsday is throwing down a bunch of cards. Superman comes in. Now, before I continue, let me ask you. If you hit Superman with a car, what do you think is going to happen to the car? The car is going to be decimated based on what we know Superman's strength is. But in this clip here... Doomsday is acting a fool. Superman is, you know, called to the scene. He comes in, all camera panning into that Cal L sign. He goes up to Doomsday. He punches him. Uno, dos, tres, three punches. But these are only stagger based punches. Now, Doomsday is about to reply. So what he does is he uses the car as a baseball bat. Wham, Superman flies away. You already suspended belief that that car was able to hit Superman and still be intact in a sense. (laughs) You see that? Look at that car. Boom. And then the car turns around. Boom. Just like that, the car is still looking good. Superman is flying in the air. And this made its way into a prototype for a video game. And this game had launched. We would have all loved this scene and said, yee-hoo, this is great. Now, for those who are saying that Superman is such a strong character, no one is arguing against that. No one is arguing against that at all. What we're saying is we have to play this very flexible rule based set, or I would call it like a body of water that flows so that we can kind of tap into the rules and in a sense, sometimes forget about the rules in order for the story to be in a sense cohesive. Just as you can see, he's coming back now for a second one. Doomsday tosses the car at him. 
He goes after it and he punches the car and look at the car. It turns into a freaking can of sardines. Then he goes after Doom Day, grabs him, runs through this building, these offices on the roof, on the ground. He's just wrecking this guy, pushes him outside. And, you know, you guys are about to fight. And then here you get a QTE punch him of which once you land that QTE punch, it sends Doomsday flying all the way over here. You've just been flexible with Superman punches. Just a second ago, you were okay when Superman was basically tickling Doomsday with these, you know, soft love taps is what I'm going to call them, right? Over here, Pam, Pam, Pam. But now you're also okay with hitting that QTE button so that Superman can go ahead and wham, light him up. So you really understand how the character is written. Even from the earlier cartoons with Paul Dini, and if you look at the episodes, you're going to also realize that within those cartoons, there were a lot of different elements that the developers, or I would say the writers and the animators, played with freely. And this Superman game actually is, or this canceled game, is showing that this is a thing that you must employ where Superman has vulnerabilities and sometimes with, say, a more conscious frame of mind, his vulnerabilities are reduced whenever he faces it. Like the car is coming now, he can just deck the car. But when he didn't necessarily figure how this car was going to be swinging because it was from Doomsday, it knocked him all the way back. I think when you put this in perspective, you can realize that a Superman game is easily well achieved without any problems. I guess you can go in with the destruction mechanics. Okay, how are we going to deal with, say, you know, uh, you know, the civilians and all of that stuff. That's a good question, you know, I mean, but that's for the game developers, the game programmers and such to be able to realize as they're working on building the game. You could also take Superman's conflicts easily out of Earth. There are many iterations that have been done for the character to be out of Earth. I mean, if you even want to go ahead and argue this point, which I think is kind of moot, you also have to argue how Superman is actually going to in a sense, interact within this particular game. You do know he's going to be fighting against Diana, right? She is a very strong character. Doomsday is a character that's gone against Diana in the past, and they both went at it for a little bit, in a sense, I think. If my memory, my recollection serves me well, I think I'm a, I must have watched this one animated uh, movie. And if, I, if I'm crazy, please correct me in the comment section where I did see Diana actually throw hands a little bit with Doomsday or with some really strong enemy. It may have been uh, freaking, what's his name? The bad guy from Ap Apocalypse or whatever his name is. So when both of them actually fight, what do you think is going to happen? What is the colossal, uh, or I would say, what is the collateral damage that's going to be there? So the suspension of belief still comes into the entire equation, and it's something that we must let room for. So whomever the developers or the writers or the publishers, whomever may be standing in the way of a Superman game, I just want to say you are wasting time and you're leaving money on the table. If you think or if anybody thinks that in order for you to get a Superman going, you know, you must answer all these questions 100 percent with, you know, pristine accuracy. That's not necessarily true. That's not the case, because, again, other games that have strong superheroes that are pretty much world destroyers if they really want to be are going to come out. I mean, there's a Wonder Woman game in the making. You'd think Diana is, you know, some soft-gloved chick. She's a literal warrior. She can punch things and make them just, you know, basically dissipate. Now, yes, not to the extent of maybe Superman all the time, but, you know, to a lesser extent, but you still have to be able to reconcile her powers and still play suspension of belief to allow for her to be vulnerable and at the same time to have invulnerabilities to things that she was probably vulnerable to just one second ago. So that's pretty much what I think many people might need to do to be able to accept a Superman game in terms of either its development, writing, or even its reception from the audience. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video, and hopefully we'll talk soon in another one. Peace out.